All right, I've been getting a lot of emails lately about uh, how to find out what type of uh, receiver buffer you need in your SPAS 12. Uh, a lot of people have just been getting them. Um, they don't know exactly what it is they're looking for, so I'm going to show you real fast how to take down your SPAS 12 and uh, see exactly what parts it is that you need. So go ahead and put your SPAS 12 into semi-automatic mode after your safety checked in, of course. And uh, pull the slide back there. It all starts with the magazine tube. Go ahead and just unscrew it all the way. And hold on a little bit because you don't want it launching across the room. Remove the tube and the spring. From there you can dump out your follower. Very carefully pull these two sections apart. It's a good time to clean your barrel if you've got that off, but we're not going to use this anymore, so set that off to the side. You should have an O-ring on your magazine tube. Uh, if not, I always send out those. If, uh, if you need some O-rings, just get a hold of me. Uh, that'll just sit in front of your gas piston on your magazine tube. Uh, from here, you're going to hit your bolt release on the back. Let everything come forward. Now this is the sort of tricky part. Um, you're kind of going to want to push just a little bit back on the piston. And there's a little hole in the chart, like on the uh, breech block, where the charging handle can fit. You can kind of see up, up here. So you're going to want to center the that little hole over the charging handle and just wiggle and pull it straight out. That'll let your whole assembly come out. Okay. Um, at this point, you're going to want to get a nickel or some kind of coin and wrap it in tape. And I've already pre-loosened mine so it's not going to need a wrench, but you can, you can put that in a wrench. And just unscrew this to remove your folding stock. Uh, if you have a non-folding stock or a static stock, whatever you want to call it, solid stock, uh, I have instructions on how to remove those as well on the, the SPAS 12 project website. So, once you get it kind of loose enough, you can just do it by hand. So, we get that out of there. Then you take a 1 16th punch, and again, I've already kind of started mine already, and punch out your trigger group pins there and there. Usually doesn't take too much. There we go. And remove your whole trigger group. Now you've got your stripped receiver on the back. This top hole is where your buffer or what's left of your stock buffer will be, or whatever kind of buffer that you have in there. You can take your punch again, just kind of stab it in there gently, and pop out or clean out whatever. If, if you just had the factory buffer left in there, it's probably just going to crumble all to pieces. But mine are in there pretty solid, so it's not wanting to come out pretty fairly easily. There we go. And that'll just kind of pop out. So, to find out which type, or which type of uh, buffer you need, you're going to come on the inside of where that hole was. And you're not probably going to be able to see in there too well, but there's a uh, just a well. Um, you know, you can kind of see on the back of the hole there, that's, that's where my finger's at. Um, just from feeling around in there, you're going to feel if the well has a, uh, you know, if it's just the walls of it are straight, uh, which would be the new style receiver, or if it has these kind of angled, uh, like a cone shape inside that buffer well. If uh, it has that, then you've got the old style receiver, so you need an old style buffer. Um, so that's how uh, that's how you tell. So this is one of the Spaz 12 project buffers. We'll just place it in there. 
I've got a new style receiver, so I've got my new style buffer. Place it in there, push on it. You'll hear it pop. That's it locking in there. And then you'll just work your way back. Let's go ahead and put my trigger group back in. Played a little rough with mine. Oh, and these do have a uh, little ring on them. Oh yeah, mine's stuck in there. There's a little ring, a little washer. You don't want to lose that. get it started. I usually will hand tighten mine and then grab a wrench and give it another maybe maybe quarter eighth of a turn tighten. It's never come loose on me from doing that. Like see there it is right now. I usually just grab a wrench and turn it until it's horizontal so not not too terribly tight. You don't want to over tighten it. Magazine spring, return spring. I'm gonna put that notch into that little cavity right there. Put your gas piston. It just kind of latches on there. It's easier to kind of do this on the side like this. Brace the back of it and just slide it right in there. Now you'll get to see that hole again. You gotta line up the uh, hole with the little groove there on your breech block. And then just push your charging handle back in. And there you go. Um, now if you remember we started the whole disassembly process with the slide pull to the rear. So go ahead and hit your other safety. Flip that back and that'll allow you to just push the whole slide back again. Take your O-ring, slip it on in front of the gas piston like that. It moves around if it needs to or as it needs to. Okay, then you'll take, uh, if you want, you can drop your follower in at this point or you can do it later, but I usually push it back in there a little ways. And again, just Slowly kind of bring these two pieces back together. Put your magazine spring. Screw it back on. I usually hold it up. If you need to also, you can just slide it into uh, manual mode so you can get a better grip on this. All right. and you just have to hand tighten that back in semi-auto mode and then push your bolt release. We know it's empty, so we'll go ahead and fire it. And there you go. Now you know whether or not you need a uh, old style or new style buffer.